top of the morning to you. 10 St. Patrick's Day activities and games that you can play in your classroom. St. Patrick's Day is a special holiday celebrated all over the world, recognizing the country of Ireland, Irish culture and its people. On March 17th, most countries have some sort of parade or festival held in honor of St. Patrick and the people of Ireland. But many people from other countries in Asia, and the Middle East and South America might not know this holiday. So this is a great opportunity for us as English teachers to share this culture with our students. Wait, let's get this thing off. Hi, I'm Eric from Etiquette. And if you would like to receive more free resources and tips on teaching, please like and subscribe to this channel. Right now, let's look at 10 games and activities that you can play in your classroom for St. Patrick's Day. Number one, Ireland and St. Patrick's Day fact sheet for traditions and vocabulary. Before you start your class, you have to share some information with your students and I'm going to show you two ways to do that. The first one is a website with a PowerPoint presentation showing how St. Patrick's Day is celebrated all over the world. I put the link in the description below. Also, I put a fact sheet that you can cut out and you can place the facts all over your classroom. Then you put the students into small groups. Tell them that they have five minutes to run around the class and to read all the information they can. This is really fun because the students are very active. They're running around and they have to read and memorize all the information they can. Uh, the students really get into it, but remember to give them a couple of rules before they start. No shouting, no pushing, no running, no touching the papers. Otherwise, you will minus points. This is a great way for students to get information in a fun way. Number two, rainbow race. Now that the students have collected all this information, you're going to have a small competition. Draw a big rainbow on your white or blackboard with a pot of gold at the end. The students in their teams will do a board race. So all of the students will start here and you will ask them trivia questions and if they get it right they can advance and the first team to get to the end wins. Have some candy for the team that gets to the pot of gold first to get the students invested in this board race. Number three, worksheets. I've collected some of the best worksheets, crosswords, word searches and a mini book that I put for free in the link down below in the description. Most of these worksheets come from a fantastic website called ISL Collective which are also put in the sources. These are free, just add your email address and then every time I have one of these videos I send these resources to the people in the newsletter. So join up you won't be disappointed. Number four, limericks. Teach your students limericks and let them write their own. So let's look at what a limerick is. A limerick is a type of poem that has five lines with a rhyme scheme that goes A, A, B, B, A. The rhyming lines usually share the same number of beats or syllables and they are usually funny or humorous poems with the last line acting as a punchline. Here's one example. There was a young lady from Leeds who swallowed a packet of seeds. Now this sorry young lass is covered in grass but has all the tomatoes she needs. Let the students work through this page, look at some of the examples and then they write their own. Afterwards they should share it with the rest of the class. Number five, the gift of gab. Irish people are known for their wit and humor. Put the students into groups of four. Three of the students think of some situation that the other one has to convince them of. For example, the student has to convince their mom 
to buy them a new pair of sneakers. So they would give all the reasons or promise them something. They have to convince the rest of the group or you have to convince your friend to share their chocolate with you. Make an excuse to a teacher why you don't have your homework. This can be as creative as they want, so let them think of anything that they should convince each other of. Number six, riddles. I've collected 60 of the most fun riddles that you can play in your class. Also, I'm going to show you how to play it with a grid game. So you can make a grid 1 to 16, 1 to 20, any amount that you want. Write it on the board and then on a paper, write it for yourself. And on that paper, it'll show you what each number means. But keep that to yourself so that the students don't see. For example, it could be plus 1. So if they're in a group, it means that they would get one extra point or plus 2. This could be minus one. It's a bomb that explodes. <laughs> Don't criticize my drawing. This sword means that they can attack another group and minus one point. Steal means that they can steal one point from a group and give it to themselves. And then this is a fantastic one. This is a switch. So if you get this, you have to switch your points with another team's points. Don't put too many of them out there. I think focus mostly on getting more points so that the students can have a lot of fun getting more points. This is a fantastic game. The students love it and you can use it for any topic. How you can play it with a riddles game. You read the riddle. The first group to answer correctly can pick a number and then they can get points or they can minus points. Number eight, Irish Proverbs. There are some fantastic Irish writers in history. And with that, there is also a lot of wisdom. I've compiled a list of 12 Irish Proverbs or sayings. Then I split each proverb in two, into A and B. So cut them all out and hand them to students. Maybe six to one group and six to another group. Then tell them they have to figure out which part goes with which. Give them a couple of minutes to figure it out and then reveal the correct answer. Once that's done, ask the students to read these proverbs and then guess what it means. It's usually really funny to go around and ask the students, okay, what do you think this one means? What do you think that one means? And once that's done, you can tell them what these proverbs mean. It's a really fun activity for advanced students. Number nine, Celtic letters. So students write their names using the Celtic, Celtic alphabet and they copy it. And then afterwards they can also color it in. This isn't a difficult activity, but sometimes it's really fun for the students to create something to take home. If you have a lot of time left and you need something to fill it up, use this activity. I left a link to a website where you can print out each letter of the Celtic Celtic alphabet. Number 10, Ireland Irish. I was going to say the final one should be students sing Ireland's Call, which is a really great song to sing together and to learn. But something I found a lot of students struggle with is separating a nationality and a country. For example, Ireland, Irish. I live in South Korea, Korean. Japan, Japanese. How can you teach students these? Well, first, Show them a map and give them a few examples. Then, if you have 20 students in your class, write down 20 countries, cut it out and give each student a random country that they have to secretly read and then hide away. Then ask the students to think of three facts about their country. Give each student a paper with every single country that you have on. Then the students walk around and they introduce their countries without saying the country's name to their friends. They can share those three facts or they can give more hints for their friends to guess. Then they write down what their friend's country was. At the end of the activity, ask the students, okay, what, where is Billy from? He is from 
Brazil. So Billy is Brazilian. This is a really good way for the students to get comfortable with talking about countries and nationalities. St. Patrick's Day is a great holiday to teach our students about another country's culture. Remember to use days like these to enrich your students' knowledge of the outside world. And tell me, which one of these activities will you do in your classroom? I'm Eric from Edicude and I'll see you all next time.